Yeah, so for this run of the workshop, uh, previously we've covered uh, running Linux on a virtual machine and also shell and bash scripting. Uh, I think how we taught that last week. Uh, today I'll be going through data wrangling through a command line. Um, yeah. So first an introduction about what NUS Hackers does. Uh, so NUS Hackers actually organizes quite a few events. Uh, some of these are weekly and we also have our annual events. So the, the event that you're currently um, in, right, is this, this event is Hacker Tools, where we go through developer tooling and um, we talk about things like using set, awk, uh, grab, and so on to uh, uh, handle data or uh, using bash scripting to write certain convenient scripts and so on. Yeah. So that's for Hacker Tools. For Hacker School, we conduct workshops, I think, on every Saturday. So that goes through, um, it is more introductory, and it goes through things like web development, app development, and so on. Uh, yeah. And then we also have Friday Hacks. So Friday Hacks is something we organize uh, weekly on a Friday. And we actually invite, I guess, um, speakers from academia, industry, or even students to talk about uh, interesting technical topics, um, things they're hacking on, and so on. And we also have Hack and Roll. So this is our annual event. And um, for Hack and Roll, we actually uh, have it, I think, around January or February, where people can just come down and um, build things. Uh, so it's like a 24-hour hackathon where you can build anything you want. And yeah. So for more details, you can look at our web page. Um, so you can just go to our web page to take a look at um, the specifics for the events. There are things like recordings and so on, which you can check out. Yeah, so a bit about myself. Um, I'm Noel. So you can, you can see my GitHub here. And um, I'm currently a year three computer science uh, student. I'm probably going to specialize in programming languages. And yeah, I enjoy hacking and building systems. I enjoy re retro gaming. So um, things like roguelikes, DCSS, and so on, uh, board games. And of course, yeah, learning about programming languages. Um, yeah. So uh, I think this was sent out in the email, um, but I guess also just to rehash this, um, make sure that you have a unique slide environment. Uh, so either Linux, uh, Mac OS, BSD, and so on. If you're on Mac OS and you are encountering some difficulty during the workshop later, and uh, you can probably run this. So what this does is to install um, the command line tools for uh, OSX. Yeah. So you can yeah you can try this later on if you encounter difficulties. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I guess when we start off, uh, the very first question that we would like to ask is you know what is data wrangling, right? Um, so the idea is this: suppose you have a bunch of text. So this can be like log files. This can be just like maybe a code base or something, right? And you want to extract certain information with it. You want to pretty print it. You want to do various things with it, right? So this is known as um, data wrangling. Uh, I think bash or Z shell is fine. Yeah, I, I don't want it's okay. Um, yeah, so we will adapt data from one format to another. And um, and uh, until you get what you want, right? Yeah. Oh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to like uh, say in the chat or unmute yourself. Um, yeah. Okay. So continuing on um, to be more willing, right? Um, what what is it in the context of Unix systems, right? So uh, the Unix philosophy is, I guess, quite similar to like functional programming, where you want to write programs that do one thing and do it well. Uh, you want to recompose all these programs together. Uh, and then you want to write uh, programs uh, which can handle text streams because there is something that's universal, right? Like uh, JSON can be represented as text. Uh, whatever source program you're using, Python and so on, all can be represented as text. Yeah, so it's like a universal interface, right? So with these three principles in mind, like how should we go about um, uh, carrying out data wrangling in Unix systems? 
So to give you all a concrete idea of how you can do that, we will first start off with a simple example. So I'm going to give everyone some time to actually like um, go into their um, into their uh, directory with the data with the data contents. So I think you should have um, gotten the data file from the link I sent earlier. So I'm just going to send the link again in case uh, anyone missed it because I saw that a few people joined. Okay, yeah. So uh, yeah, make sure that you have this data on hand uh, because this is what we'll be using throughout the workshop. Does anyone need time to like pull the data? Mm. You can you can DM me or just like say like mention it in the chat. Yeah. Okay, I'm guessing that everyone has done so. Okay, so we'll continue on. Yeah, so you should have the data folder here. And now that we have the data folder, we want to um, look at uh, the log files inside. So we have provided some example log files, right? So inside the data file, uh, inside the data folder, you will see uh, a log file here, right? And if we actually examine the contents, yeah, it's quite extensive, right? So we don't want to be loading the entire thing. We just want to um, extract uh, parts of, um, in this uh, uh, example where we are actually filtering for logs. Um, it's specifically, we are searching for logs occurring at this specific uh, date and time, right? So let's try that. Yes, that will give you the same result. So dash i here actually tells you to ignore case. So a uh, much and crypto much should uh, be the same, right? So we can run it like uh, as a demonstration later. So you can see here that this filter, um, this managed to filter all the log entries um, uh, at, at, at on the on the twenty first of March at at one o one. And um, yeah, as Alvin did mention, this will work well as well. Yeah. So you can see here that um, this is case insensitive thanks to the i case. So during um, where well, we are going through the commands and stuff, right? If you aren't sure what um, a certain command uh, is doing, you can always use man, right? So you can take a look at man and just type in the command. And here you'll be able to see like the exact documentation that specifies how it should behave, right? So if you're interested in the, in the dash i flag, um, type the back, type the forward slash, and just search for dash i, and we can find that um, uh, the definition of what it does. So you can see here that it says ignore case. Yeah. Yeah. So this is an example of basic data wrangling, um, where we can you know filter system log entries. So you can try other things here. Yeah, I can filter for like words, keywords like Intel and so on. And the idea behind data wrangling is you know be well versed with a set of tools um, and know how to compose them together, right? So as mentioned, the Unix philosophy, right? Yeah. And so uh, the I guess the, the two things that we need, right? The two things that we need for data wrangling is uh, we will need a data source and we also will need something to do with it, right? So in this case, it's log files. And what can we do with log files? Um, yeah. Uh, so the very first thing that we can do is, well, we can see, uh, you know, given a log file um, from server, who is trying to log into our uh, server, right? So we can type it over to grab. So again, this is pretty long. Um, later on, we'll refine it further. But here, let's explain the commands. So pet log here basically just says, okay, given a file name. So log is our file name. So when we type uh, ls, we can see all of the files in the current directory. And um, cat log basically selects one of these files and like outputs it, right? Um, yeah, so you can see main cat. 
concatenate the files and print them on standard output. So, okay, now we are using it to cat the entire of the log file. And we're not just concatenating and printing it out for standard out, we are also grabbing for SSHD. So if you look at the uh, contents here, right? Okay, so if you look at the contents here, you can see that there's a SSHD um, at each line, right? So we are filtering for that, for the mention of that. Yeah. So which can be done better. Um, yeah, so the way we actually want to do that is uh, using grab to refine it further. Um, yeah. Okay, let me send the command markdown file to everyone so that we can just copy and paste the command in. Um, give me a moment. Okay, so uh, it is all right. So I've sent the commands file into the chat. Um, you can use this to like copy and paste the commands that we'll run later on. Um, yeah. So the the first command, the first two commands are pretty simple. So um, we are refining our earlier. Uh, uh, our, our earlier uh, pipeline by adding um, uh, what do you call it? Subsequent uh, 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 calls to grab, right? Oh yeah, I should actually explain pipe. So what pipe does is that well, pipe takes the output from um, catalog. So all of these lines that was outputted from catalog, it pipes it over to grab, right? So it basically passes it. Um, to grab, uh, yeah, and then um, grab SSHD gets applied to the outputs from that, and we can further uh, pipe it again to another uh, call to grab and filter for this line, right? So here we are just basically saying let's find um, all the cases that we actually accepted the public key, right, from a certain user. And we can also, we, we realize that inside our input here, right, there's a lot of like extra things that we don't really need, right, when we are, when we are looking through our logs. This, this is some example of that, right, we want to get rid of this, right, so how can we do that? Well, we can use um, set and regular expressions. So set um, is basically like a stream editor that builds on top of the old add editor. So add is, um, I guess, uh, editor that previous generations used to edit hex files. And um, you can see here that there was, it, it's basically like a predecessor to V and Vim, right? Where we added more like functionalities to it. Um, yeah. So you basically give, um, in set, you basically give like short commands on how you can modify the file or yeah, how you can modify the input um, to set. So the most common one and the one we'll be using during this workshop is the S command that's for substitution. Okay, so here we're gonna actually try it out. Um, so what this does is that it cats log over to um, SSHD and then it grabs for the instances of this as well. And then it finally substitutes all strings. So what does this say, right? This says that match all characters. So it matches all of this. Any character will, will do. Any character matches until, um, so it does so greedily until we hit uh, the last accepted public key for, right? So the minute it hits this, then yeah, this is considered a match. So um, we will try that. And then, and then finally, we actually call set to do a substitution. Um, so the first part of the substitution command basically talks about the regex that we want to match. The second part here is empty, but we can actually put things like um, 
what, what we want to replace it with, right? So S is again for substitution. So we want, do we want to substitute this match with? So in this case, we are actually matching with nothing. So you'll see that um, what we get is a deletion of um, the match, right? So everything uh, up to accepted public key for uh, is deleted. Yeah. So if we like type in A, then we will see that you know it get re it gets replaced with A and yeah. So this section here, what what is this right? This is actually known as a regular expression. Um yeah and uh yeah as mentioned, this is the syntax for substitute where you first talk about where you just um where you first put your regex inside, then you put the substitution string. Yeah. So um. What is a regular expression, right? So it's actually a powerful construct that allows you to match text against patterns. And um, they are actually common and useful. So it's actually worthwhile to spend some time to like understand how regexes work. Later on, I will be sharing a resource that you can use to, uh, I guess, debug your regex expressions. And yeah, something to note is that they are usually surrounded by a slash. It's just, um, I guess, like a convention. And um, yeah, most characters carry normal meaning, but you have some special characters as we saw earlier. So like dot and star where dot says match any character, star says match any number of it. Yeah, so these are some examples of special characters. And um, we also, uh, well, the thing about regular expressions is that there are multiple implementations of it. So depending on how they define the regular expression syntax, it might change. So later on, we'll be using um, something more modern. Um, yeah. So this is for, uh, this is regex for um, set, right? Uh, which is what we are currently using. And you can visit this page here to get a nice tutorial on regex um, once you're done with like, the workshop. Oops. Once you're done with the workshop. Okay, let me just copy this over. Are there any questions so far? Okay. Um, yeah, so, um, well, sets regex is still a bit weird. Uh, sometimes you need to put like a slash behind some of this to give it a special meaning. Um, yeah, but it's like, because set is using uh, obsolete regex format, and you can actually avoid this by using the dash e flag. So this tells you to actually use the modern regex format. Yeah. So you can run the man for this to see like the differences. Um, you might need to install a man page. I'm not sure. Um, depending on what this show you're on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we went over this earlier. Um, something else to note for this is that um the star and plus right are considered greedy so in the event that we had you know two for example if we had two of these in a row what will happen is that star will match up to the first one and there will be a second accepted public key for right so you'll match as much of the pattern as you can and so this might not be the behavior that we want for example if we just want to match the first instance like basically not greedy right you want to just first match match the first instance of this then um, this might be uh, an issue for us. Yeah. Yeah, so there's something to note. And um, now we actually take a look at um, trying this on a Regex debugger. So, so you can open this up, this link up. Uh, on your browser. So, I'll put it up here, the expression that we um, showed just now. And this is from Regex 101. So this is um, the way you can use to um, debug, your, uh, debug your regular expressions. So um, the explanation is actually given here. You actually do like a step-by-step -step, um, explanation for your Regex expressions. Uh, yeah. 
So the very first thing that, okay, this, this is, a bit, is a bit colorful, but I'll go through step by step to talk about what, you know, what each of these does. So the very first thing is something that we've encountered earlier. So this segment we've encountered earlier. Now this part here, you can see there's extra parentheses around it. This basically tells us to capture it, right? And why do we want to capture? Well, um, suppose that this segment here is a username or something, right? Maybe we want to capture the username and we want to do something with it later, right? So that's what capture groups are for. So this allows us to capture that segment. And this second part here, you can see here, um, there is a way that we want to, to match digits. And this is basically the number of digits we are matching, right? One to three. And so if you see this pattern repeat itself, and what, what is this pattern, right? So this is actually to get the IP address, right? Your digits dot, your digits dot, yeah. So this captures the IP address. And then next uh, is just a plain text port, and then you capture the port number, right? And finally, um, yeah, we just uh, match the rest of the, the line and yeah. Okay, so we can now go back to see this in action. So we we'll want to run, um, yeah, we want to run this. So we can just copy and paste it. Let me send it in the chat. Yeah, so you can use this command and just paste it and run it. So, hey, why is it blank, right? Um, well, you can see again that uh, we actually substitute it with nothing again. So we do want to fill this up with something reasonable, right? So again, if we type like A or something, we'll see that it gets... Yeah, remember earlier on, we talked about capture groups, right? So the capture groups that were mentioned here, um, yeah, the capture groups that were mentioned here basically allows us to capture the username, um, the IP address, and the port number. So we are going to use that and um, try things out. Um, before we do that, does anyone have any questions? Is, yeah, if you, are curious, if you are confused about capture groups or uh, any specific thing, just let me know. Okay, so I'll continue on. Um, yeah. So here we are substituting with backslash one, right? So what does this mean? Well, these are positional arguments for the output, right? So remember earlier that we actually have capture groups um, denoted, denoted by brackets. So this is the first capture group. So this is actually specified by backslash one. Sorry, yeah. This is actually specified by backslash one. And then we have the next capture group, which is specified by backslash two and backslash three for pop. So the very first thing we can do is to get um, the usernames. So you can see here that, yeah, we've managed to extract all of the deep usernames um, that we accepted public keys for. Yeah, so this is for backslash one. And you can try it out as well for backslash two, which extracts the IP addresses. And backslash three, which, um, which basically gets the port numbers. Yeah. So, um, something else that, I mean, you, you can imagine that this is already pretty complicated, but you can probably come up with something more I guess even more complicated, right? Like you can also match email addresses. Um, you can also do like uh, arithmetic. Um, yeah, but these are just like for curiosity and 
you are, I guess, really not recommended to do all of these regexts. Yeah. So for something quick and dirty like this, um, you can use regex. Yeah. Yeah, so now we have this, right? And we are able to get usernames for this. What's next? Well, we can also do everything we've said, even though this is, I guess, not really Unix philosophy, but um, something else we can do is, is shown here, right? Where we can use, um, so we can use this to basically add another script that we want to run on the input that's being piped in. So we say that, you know, given this input, let's delete all of these lines, right? That match this, sorry, that don't match this, right? So we filter out everything that doesn't match this. So this basically does the same thing as what Grab did for us, where we uh, filtered away everything that did not match the Grab pattern. And instead, what we are doing is that we are putting it in set as a script. So this tells us to delete all of those lines. And when we run this, it should give us the same result. Yeah. Any questions so far? So okay, continuing on. Um, yeah, do let me know if you want me to slow down. Uh, if you want to experiment, if you want me to try out other things to demonstrate, uh, yeah. Okay, so continuing on, um, we have also something. Um, no, I, I don't think anything. I mean, this was the last. The last thing that was posted was just the command. Um, so this was just the last command that I sent. Can you see that command? I just sent it. Ah, okay, nice. Um, yeah, correct. Uh, the set command, the cat, yeah, basically the whole pipeline of, of things, yeah. Okay, so continuing on, right? So here we are actually introducing two new um, uh, tools that we can use. So we have sort and we have unique, right? So sort and unique are um, pretty straightforward. So let's just see how sort and unique works, right? So I think there's something called seek. Um, yeah, so seek allows you to print a sequence of numbers. So we can do like seek 20. Yeah, they will print out uh, a bunch of numbers for us. And well, we can sort them using sort. Um, so something to note is that the default state for sort is actually um, uh, lexical, right? So it's like based on like, so for example, if you have a bunch of words, right? Uh, sort will sort it like A first, then B and so on and so forth. Yeah. So it does the same thing here. It groups them by the common character, one first, then two and three and so forth. So this is, may not be what we want all the time. We can also do sort dash N, which just sorts it by number, sort dash N reverse, to sort in reverse order. And yeah, you can explore this by just like looking at the manual page. Um, yeah. Okay, anyway, we will be using this to actually like um, condense like uh, the usernames. So previously, uh, we did get a whole bunch of usernames, right? But again, this is not, I guess, super useful. Like we, we probably, probably want to get some more information out of this. So, well, what can we do? Well, we can pipe it into sort. So this basically just sorts it um, by lexical order. And the next thing we can do is also to um, filter out all uh, duplicate instances and count these duplicate instances. So now we get a very we get a very nice table here that tells us okay, we have 88 instances of Kari sending this. Um, request to, to connect to our SSH, by SSH, sorry, yeah. And then we have 76 instances of Einstein and so on, right? Yeah. And so, well, we can also go a step further. Um, 
So, so far we've done like sorting and doing unique. So we can also do like something like top three most common. Well, given this input, right? Like who is the, who are, who are those that um, have been connecting via SSH the most commonly, right? So um, to do that, you can simply just add more to say, um, sort by number, right? So the first, First here, uh, the first thing here is a number, right? So we want to sort by the number because we want to see who has um, tried to connect the most. Who, who has, sorry, who has connected the most, right? Yeah, so the first thing here sorts by number and then the second flag, K1, says that you should only sort by the first white space separated column. So sort by this column. And um, comma N here, so comma one here basically says sort until the end field. Um, by default, we'll sort until the end of the line, but here we care about you know the first field, right? And after that, we pipe that to tail dash entry, right? So what does this do? Well, from the tail, it takes um the the three elements at the tail. So we can run this step by step. So first, you run um sorting by uh the first column by the numbers. And so you can see that they're, they are the last three elements. And the next thing we want to do is to um, get the last three elements. So yay, we've gotten what we wanted. Yeah. So um, I'll give everyone some time. We can also have, a, we'll have exercise now to like try, you know, what if you wanted to get um, the least common ones instead? Yeah. So I'll give everyone maybe like, I don't know, uh, two, Two minutes or three minutes yeah let me know if you need more time but you can try it out uh, locally also ask questions if you are confused by any part If the column before the first white space is not numerical, well, actually, I'm not sure. Let me try. Um, how should that be done? Hmm. Oh, well, I guess we can just like trim it off. Okay, and then now we do sort dash. Okay, I don't know, maybe by character value. So like, yeah. Does unique only collapse and count adjacent rows that are the same? If I don't put sort, uh, hmm. yeah. So again, look at the can look at the main page. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, if you just adjacent matching lines. Actually, I didn't know this also, <laughs> but okay. Yeah, everyone knows now. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Um, does anyone need more time to experiment? You can also DM like if you're if you're shy. Yeah. Okay, so I guess I'll continue on. Um, yeah, so 
Um, where was that command? Yeah. So, well, the way we can do this, uh, if you wanted to get, you know, the uh, least common usernames that um, we're trying to assess uh, by SSH, right? We can also use head. So this basically gives us the start of the list, right? So if we look again at the output, you can see here this, these are the top three, right? Yeah, so um, head takes the top three. Another thing we can do is also to sort in reverse order. Uh, is R here? Yeah, so we can also sort in reverse order and yeah, get the result that we want. Okay, so continuing on. Yeah, so this was um, basically what was done. And um, yeah, okay, so now uh, we want to actually do something more uh, um, different, right? So instead of printing usernames in sequence like this, can we do things like printing them in a single line? And how do we do that? So, hmm, the way to, sorry, the way we do that is actually we can print the second argument. So this basically says, um, print the second argument and using paste, um, paste dash s. So let's just see the output from, from um, op first, right? Yes, yeah, second column. Yeah. So you can see here that it prints the second column, right? And then the next thing that we want to do is um, we want to concatenate all of these uh, usernames and we want to put commas between them. All right, so how can we do that? Well, we can use paste. So paste says that um, you can combine uh, uh, combine lines with the dash s option. And then you can specify the delimiter by doing um, d and also the delimiter that you want to use. So in this case, we are using comma. And finally, dash here basically says that instead of taking a file, you are just taking it from standard input. Yeah. So you can see here it concatenates nicely for us. And um, if we don't pass in uh, the delimiter by default, you just use, I think, oh, I think tabs. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll just use, I guess, tabs to delimit them. Um, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Something else to note is that you probably can also use um, TR to, uh, to like replace all of the new lines. So we can try that out. But um, the problem with that is that there's a trailing new line which will be replaced with a comma as well. So like you'll get, yeah, we get this, which is not really what we want. So um, we just use awk, right? And what exactly is awk? So awk is, not, is another new tool that we can use. And it is good at processing um, text stream. It is, I guess you can call it a DSL for domain specific language for um, processing text streams. And um, well, there's uh, quite a lot of functionality inside because I mean, yeah, it's a full-blown programming language, but uh, we'll just go through the basics and the practical things that we can use. Yeah. So the basic of pattern is like, like so. Um, first you'll type in the pattern and then you'll have uh, a block, right? And what, what does this mean? Um, so the pattern, basically we use the pattern to say that, uh, no, does, does the input match this pattern? And if the and if the input matches this pattern, what should we do with it, right? So that's why it's stated inside the block. Yeah. And by default, if you see here that we did not pass in any pattern, so by default, this matches all lines. Any questions so far? Okay, so continuing on, um, inside the block, right, uh, we have a few variables which we can use to um, access different line contents, right? So, 
So let's just use an example. I think you can just like. Oh, right, and we can type that to awk. So if we want to get the second one, I think it's just this. Oops, am I calling it wrong? Oh yeah, quotes. Yeah, so that gets the second argument for us. And yeah. Um, so what this says is that for every line that's coming in, uh, just print the contents of the second field. Uh, yeah. And so in the case above, that just happens to be like the username. Yeah, so something now we can we can do something more involved, which is to say, um, well, we want to get uh, the usernames, which I only use once. So how can we uh, do that, right? So we can add in a new pipe that accesses the first argument. So this is the first, sorry, this is the first column. So um, it accesses the first column and it says that it should be equal to one. And the second condition is that um, the second column should match uh, this regular expression here. Yeah. And then finally, what we want to do is to do work count. Um, yeah. So let's try that out. Yeah, so here we managed to filter out. Um, okay, here we've managed to filter out to get um, the usernames. I'm not sure why one is missing, but. Okay, wash one. Okay, I'm not sure there's why, why one is missing, but okay. Um, so. Yeah, so basically that allows us to filter for the instance, instances of one button. Yeah, okay, I'll need to figure that out. But yeah, um, yeah. so finally, uh, the, the next thing that we want to do is also to count the number of uh, usernames which only occur once. Um, so to do that, we can just simply add a work count behind. Sorry, work count dash L. Yeah, okay. So that gives us the Oh, okay. Dash R. Oh, thanks. So if I do this, oh, no. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you can send a command to the chat if you figure it out. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Anyway. Um, so continuing on, um, yeah, remember that, you know, awk is a programming language, so we can do more fancy things, like um, we can have uh, variables inside, right? So uh, first, we can have a begin clause, which says that uh, we want to declare a variable rows. And inside, um, we have the earlier expression that we use to, uh, to, to match like single use usernames. And at, at each step, what we do is that uh, we increment the variable um, by one. Yeah, okay, so we will run this command and let's see what we get out of it. Yeah, so you can see here again that um, we've managed to get the number of rows, but this time without using word count and just by using like the functionalities from awk. Yeah. Okay, so um, continuing on, uh, we could actually just use awk for everything, but again, I guess this is not super recommended. Takes one long lines and, oh, I haven't seen that before, yeah. But I mean, you can share it to the chat. I'm sure everyone will be keen to see it. Yeah. Yeah, but um, generally, uh, I don't think you want to do something super long in awk. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you can see from the syntax itself, it's 
not exactly very nice. Yeah, it's, it's okay for like quick and dirty things, but like, yeah. Um, so you can also look at this link here. Uh, let me just send the link in the chat. Um, so. Yeah, this is the link you can use to learn more about awk. Um, I think they cover some like practical patterns you can use. Yeah, okay. So something else interesting that we can do is that, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Yeah, write only code. That's, that's very true. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, we can also do quick math, right? Um, so earlier on we had, so we had, Sorry. Yeah, so we had this uh, list of uh, usernames with their counts, right? And what if we wanted to add the total number of usernames? Well, we can get the numbers, concat them with plus as the delimiter. And finally, we can pass it to uh, a command like a, com, uh, a calculator on a command line. So what is BC, right? So if you look at man BC, um, is basically a arbitrary precision calculator language, and you can use it um, like so, right? So you can just like write um, calculator expressions and just like run them. Yeah. So by piping that into BC, BC will help us to calculate the um, total number of usernames. Oh yeah, so if you don't have BC installed, I guess you can install it. Yeah, it may not always be the case. Some of these tools may not be in like all the distros, but yeah, I guess it's like exposure also to know what kind of tools are out there. But thanks for pointing that out, yeah. Okay, so... Um, the next thing that we want to look at is also XRPs. So let's look at XRPs. So um, instead of counting like um, instead of counting the numbers, right? We can also just like um, echo them using XRPs. But again, this is just like to demonstrate what XRPs does. We'll be using it for more. Um, fancy stuff later, but yeah. Basically what this does is that um, it takes all of the inputs and passes them as uh, command line uh, command line arguments to echo, right? So this is like echo one, 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 and so on, right? Yeah, and so on. Actually I can just echo, yeah. So it just passes all of these as command line arguments echo and yeah. So um, here we'll actually be using uh, the temp directory. So make sure that you have that ready. Um, yeah. Because this is integer, I think it's arbitrary. They mentioned that it's arbitrary. Um, I'm not sure, let me try. Oh yeah, you can, I mean, it's floating point, so I guess you can, yeah. Any other questions? Okay, so yeah, continuing on with XRs, right? So here we actually want to delete our temp folder with, or rather delete irrelevant, irrelevant files in our temp folder. Right, so we have a bunch of nonsense inside, right? So let's get rid of them. And how can we get rid of them? Well, um, we can run, we can first try this command. Okay, so make sure that you are running this like uh, in the like proper, in the sandbox like directory. Maybe you want to make a new directory with like just temp inside. Um, yeah, I don't want to delete any of your important files. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, yeah, but anyway, this shouldn't work. Um, so make sure they are inside the temp, inside the temp folder first. Okay. And once you are inside the temp folder, then we can continue. Um, 
So, oh yeah, you can watch the demo. Uh, if you don't want to risk it, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, so here basically we're trying to delete the files from here, and let's run this command. Okay, so what exactly is going on here, right? It just spit up, I spit out a bunch of error messages that says, you know, you cannot remove all of these files. So, well, it's actually to do with the white space splitting, right? Um, so XRX, no, no, yeah, no sudo, don't use sudo when you're deleting stuff. Um, unless you are very sure what you're doing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, Continuing on, yeah. Um, here we can do. Let's 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 see what this does first. So here we are replacing um, all of the files. Sorry, all of the delimiters with a null byte uh, because white space will basically split your um, your inputs into two arguments, right? So it becomes instead of becoming like so instead of becoming like RM uh, ASD to A85, right? Instead it becomes this. And because that is limited by white space, and you get this error message. Right. So we actually want to avoid that. And so we just replace everything by now bytes. And now we can just like remove it. And now if we uh, show the contents of the temp directory again. Wow, okay, we are left with the wow file. Yeah. Yay, clap. Okay. So, yeah, any questions so far? Okay. So continuing on, um, so let's just restore the time directory first. Why is my checkout not working? Okay. Okay, weird, but okay. Um, RM one. One one oh one is to never use. Oh yeah, okay. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's correct. Uh, we should use find instead of um, these to to match file names. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Yeah. So, continuing on. Um. Okay, so we have other commands that we that we can use. Um, so these are for like exploration, like uh, you know sometimes you see um, regex in the wild that does like set regex uh, substitution dash g. G is basically like a global flag um, that like replaces all instances of this, right? Uh, yeah. And I think dash i, okay, I can't remember for dash i, but I'm pretty sure you can check the manual for that. Yeah, maybe I think it's an interactive, for me it's an interactive way to do it. Yeah, but yeah. So um, something else to know also is that do not generally, actually do not, yeah, not generally, do not use set to like um, pipe uh, from input to the same input source. Um, the reason for that is that uh, it will first, so you can see here, right? This actually first, this actually first truncates the entire input dot text, right? So what will happen is that uh, it will truncate everything, so we'll have an empty text file, and then we'll try to run set on the empty text file. So instead of like replacing the things that we wanted, we just erase the entire file. So generally, like when you are using set, uh, do not write to the same uh, input source. Uh, I think this holds also for like, yeah. So this holds for any other tools that uh, you use that, you know, write. Um, when, when you're writing to, from input to output, yeah, just don't use the same input source. 
other things you can try. Um, okay, I won't try them here on my system because I don't have like the dictionary uh, um, on hand today. But yeah, uh, I think most Linux distros should have this. My, my distro doesn't, but yeah, uh, you can use this and you can like play around with all of these things that's mentioned here and just like try, try them out. Yeah. And yeah, okay. So any questions? Okay, if no questions, um, oh yeah, also fill up the feedback form. Sorry, I should send this in the chat. Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, I have to fill up the feedback form. Let me know like areas that I can improve for this presentation. Um, this is the first time I'm teaching this workshop, but yeah, let me know if there's any areas that you wish I would explore, explain more about. And yeah, yeah. Um, thanks for coming. Also, the next hacker tools will be after I think recess week, so that's like in a month, a month later. And we have other interesting workshops with regards to Linux. So I think how we is going to teach like um, magic validator. I mean, you can, uh, like you mean like static matrix validator? Yeah, I don't know. Or you mean like the debugger? Yeah, it's validator. Um, yeah, but um, so uh, uh, the, the next workshop that we have will be on LaTeX. And I think later on in the semester, there also will be one on um, Linux internals as well. So yeah, uh, you can join the later ones um, if you're interested too.